Uh, now we will move on to the next lecture, uh, which is by Dr. Ashish Kumar. He is the professor of gastroenterology and hepatology at Ganganam Institute of Postgraduate Medication, Medical Education and Research. And Dr. Ashish is going to speak on meta-analysis, how to read forest plot. This is an extremely important uh, uh, discussion and I would uh, request Dr. Ashish to proceed with this presentation. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you, Dr. Seigel, for your kind introduction. At the outset, I would like to thank uh, uh, the uh, INASEL for giving me an opportunity to talk about meta-analysis, uh, how to read the forest plot. Dr. Goodman has already given a very good introduction, so th that has made my job easier. And here in the panel is Dr. Rakesh Agrawal, who actually had taught me meta-analysis, so I'm very thankful for him that I'm speaking before him. So. Uh, regarding forest plot. So as a, as a child, we must have uh, made lots of uh, forest uh, diagrams, forest pictures like these. But as a statistician, uh, when we talk about forest, it differs from these uh, small forests. And we actually, what we would do is rotate this into 90 degree and take the stems and add to uh, top of those uh, trees and remove all the background and make them dark and uh, not colorful and add something like a diamond below, add here, one line here, one line here, throw in some numbers, and then we would call this a forest plot. So why should we make a forest plot? See, once uh, we are answering a question, research question, and uh, most some studies are in favor of some intervention, other studies are against some intervention, so we don't know what to do. So the best option is to study a meta-analysis or read a meta-analysis or a systematic review. The most important uh, thing what we need to see in the meta-analysis is a diagram, which is called as forest plot, because it summarizes the results from multiple studies into one figure. And not only it, does it give all the uh, some uh, statistics, it also tells us how important each study is. That means the weight of that study. And then it finally gives a summary of uh, the evidence, whether the intervention or uh, uh, outcome is uh, the question what we are asking, do we get a clear cut answer or not? So let us go into each component of a forest plot. The first thing which uh, we make in a forest plot is a horizontal axis, which sits in the below. And that has got the effect size or the outcome effect. The effect size depends on the statistics which we use. If we are using a comparative statistics, then the most likely, most commonly used statistics is uh, odds ratio, relative risk, hazard ratio. But there could be other kind of statistics uh, such as absolute risk reduction or standardized mean difference or proportion. So any kind of uh, statistics we can use and we have to select those studies which has used similar kind of statistics. So for example, in intervention studies, there can be two types of outcome. One is dichotomous outcome and continuous outcome. Dichotomous outcome is, uh, is such that either positive or negative, either alive, dead, pregnant, non-pregnant. So when we are uh, doing uh, statistics for these, then we'll use either odds ratio, relative risk. These are the most common. There are other uh, things like hazard ratio we can use. But when the outcomes are continuous, for example, how much has blood pressure reduced by an antihypertensive drug? Then uh, the outcome is continuous. Or uh, uh, what is the redu reduction in the risk? Then uh, we will use something like mean difference or a standardized mean difference. So uh, whatever we use, we will put them at the bottom. The second thing which we add in the metanal uh, forest plot is a vertical line, which is called as the line of null effect. And this line is placed either at one or at the zero, and it depends on the what statistics which you are using. For example, if you are using odds ratio, relative risk, we'll put this line at one. But if you are using absolute uh, risk reduction or standardized mean difference, then we'll put this line at zero. And sometimes we even skip this line. For example, if we are doing meta-analysis on proportion. So this line is a line of null effect, and it is similar to the null hypothesis. 
so null hypothesis says that our intervention is, will be no difference from the uh, control so that means intervention and the uh, without intervention and intervention both will be equal so though they will be same so the uh, null hypothesis will be uh, same and so the line of null effect will be on one but if you are saying uh, in terms of absolute risk reduction that this intervention will reduce the chances of mortality by 10%, certain intervention will reduce the chances of mortality by uh, 20%. So in control, there's no reduction in mortality. So that time the null uh, hypothesis, uh, according to null hypothesis, will place this line at zero. So next, once we have created this graph, then we'll put in the data of individual studies the individual lines. So these lines have got two components. One is the result of that particular study, the main study, and the dispersion or the 95% con confidence interval. The result is usually shown in the box, and the 95% confidence interval is shown in the uh, form of a line, horizontal line. For example, in this study, the result was 0 0.45, and the 95% confidence interval ranged from 0.18 here, this side up to 1.1. So this is how this study is placed. Now, we also have to see what is below uh, the uh, horizontal line. And it is often a good idea uh, uh, where, uh, when we uh, label it uh, what the study uh, shows. For example, if most of the studies are uh, on the left side and uh, they, there's a comparison between treatment and uh, control, and most of the studies are on the, this side and the summary estimate is on the, this side, then we can say that the, our meta-analysis favors treatment. If it is on the other side, it may say it favors control. For example, if there's a comparison between two treatment, suppose we are comparing tenofovir with entecavir for hepatitis B, then both sides will be uh, the treatment arm, but one side will be tenofovir, other side will be entecavir. And whatever the, each of these studies lie, we'll say those studies uh, are favoring one of the two uh, um, outcomes. So the labeling helps to understand the result of individual studies of the meta-analysis. And so most often the, you will find this labeling. Now, let us put some more studies. We have added three, uh, two more studies. So now we have three, more, three studies in this um, uh, forest plot. So some studies have got a bigger box and some studies have got a smaller box. So the size of box actually represents the weight of the study. And usually the weight comes from the number of the patient or the sample size, most of the time, but not always. So if the uh, sample size is bigger, we'll have a larger box. If the sample size is smaller, then we'll have a smaller box. So actually this gives the weight and that weight is uh, finally added up into the summary. Then the other thing is the confidence interval. So the long, um, so the confidence interval is uh, the simplest way to understand a 95% confidence interval is that suppose this experiment was, uh, was repeated a hundred times. Each time we'll get a result which is slightly different. But in 95% of the times, the result will lie between the lower bound and the upper bound. So uh, we are 95% uh, sure that the results will be between this and this uh, lower 5% and upper 95%. So this is 95% conf confidence interval. So uh, rule of thumb is that the narrower the con confidence interval, the more precise the study. And wider the confidence interval, we are more unsure of the result. So the actual results of this study is here, but it could have been here, it could have been here, it could have been anywhere. So uh, one another thing is if the line uh, of confidence interval crosses the line of null effect, then thus that study is uh, st statistically not significant for that treatment outcome. If it does not uh, cross, if it lies on the uh, one side or the other side, then uh, those studies are statistically significant. So now once we have added all the study in the forest plot, what we uh, make here is a diamond. This diamond is the summary of all the studies uh, which is calculated statistically. So the, the diamond also has got same properties. The width of the diamond is the confidence interval of the uh, summary statistic. And where that diamond lies is the result of the 
summary statistics. So uh, since uh, the diamond has, with the diamond, we are most confident. So, in the, so most of the time, the diamond's width will be smaller than the widths of all the individual uh, confidence intervals of the studies. And the, this diamond represents the combined effect size and confidence interval when we have combined and averaged all the individual studies together. So um, uh, forest plot not just has got this graph, but it has got certain other uh, numbers and uh, labels, which I will come to here. The uh, leftmost uh, label is the individual study, name of the author of that study and the year it was published. So it is either given uh, year-wise or it can be given uh, uh, alphabetically or depending on the effect size. So each individual study and the lead author and the year of publication is given on the left side. Second thing is that uh, these numbers are there. So there is one treatment group, control group. The n, smaller n mentioned here is the events in the treatment group and the larger n represents the total number of patients. For example, in this study by Gamsu, the total number of patients in the treatment group was 131, and total number of patients in the control group was 137. The events occurred in 15 patients in the treatment group and 22 patients in the control group. Similarly, on all these. So, uh, uh, most of the uh, um, forest plot ha will have this, which will give us a, a, a an idea of how, how many the patients uh, were there in individual studies and what were the effects. Then the last column most uh, commonly is the actual risk ratios or actual odds ratios, which is actually the same thing which is represented here graphically is given here in the form of numbers. So this is the actual effect size and it is the confidence interval and uh, uh, and uh, finally, the lowermost row will show the total of uh, all the studies averaged together. So the diamond is here and the uh, effect size of that uh, combined averaged uh, effect as well as its 95% confidence interval. Finally, there's something in small prints on the left side, but it, this is also important. So the first thing we look here is the p-value here. P-value here is uh, the uh, whether the uh, it overall effect was significant or not, which we can also do away with p-value. Since if the uh, diamond is crossing the central line null effect, then usually the study is not significant. If it is not crossing, it is on either side, then it is significant. But same thing we can see also from the p-value. The other thing which is important we should look is on the heterogeneity and especially the i squared value which has been already alluded to by Dr. Goodman. So I squared tells us whether or after combining these, all these studies, whether the, these studies were heterogeneous or homogeneous and lower the I squared value, uh, the better is the meta-analysis and more sure we are of the results, but at least it should be less than 50%. But if the I squared is more than 50%, then we have to do uh, certain additional things uh, to uh, get a better result. For example, we may have to do uh, this uh, combining the results using either ran random effects or fixed effects. So if there is high heterogeneity, you be use random effects. And also we need to explore why there is heterogeneity. So we may do a subgroup analysis. So we may group these studies into uh, various by various parameters and we see why there is heterogeneity. And we also look at publication bias. So I'll give, share with you certain examples. This forest plot shows the standardized mean difference. Uh, uh, so here the uh, line of null effect lies in the zero. So most of the study had shown that the uh, uh, mean difference was in the negative side. And so the overall also was on the negative side. So here the main important thing is that this line of uh, null effect lies in the zero. Here is a different kind of study where they were looking at incidence of death among various studies. And so the line of null effect is zero, but very important thing, since no study can have death in the negative, either we can have zero death or we can have some deaths. So there'll be no graph on the left side. So the graph starts from the zero and goes on the, this side. And the uh, 
line of nile, nile effect here will be zero. And so the overall uh, frequency of death uh, in this study was about 5% with this confidence interval. Another is the proportion. Uh, this is from the meta-analysis which I had done. So I had looked at the uh, proportion of diabetes in patients who are admitted with severe uh, COVID disease. And what I combined all the studies and what I found that the proportion was approximately 11% among these patients. So this is proportion. And since we are dealing with proportion, there's no line of null effect here. Then what sometimes if there's heterogeneity, uh, and then we do subgroup analysis. Subgroup analysis, for example, in this meta-analysis, they have subgrouped the, instead of combining all the studies together, they have grouped them into male uh, stud, uh, studies which have only male patients, studies which had only female patients, and then they have uh, give the subgroup analysis of both these groups, and the finally uh, total of both, or the combined of both these groups. And this is a very good way of exploring heterogeneity. So to summarize, each horizontal line in a forest plot represents an individual study. And the results of that individual study is plotted as a box where the size of the box represents the weight of that study. And 95% confidence interval display is displayed as a line. The implication of each study falling on one side of the line or the other side, we need to see, and it depends on the outcome. For example, if we are comparing treatment with control, or we are comparing uh, two treatment. So it will depend uh, what is, uh, where the each of the study lies. If the individual study crosses the vertical line, then that study does not give a statistically significant difference. The diamond shows the combined result and the width of the diamond is the 95% confidence interval of that study. The I square statistic gives a idea of heterogeneity and it is better if the I square is less than 50%, as and Dr. Goodman said, it should be even better if it is less than 40%. Thank you for your patience. Thank you, Dr. Ashish. Uh, we'll have the question answers in the last.